our food has just drastically changed so much that we have to be kind of you know our own um, mm -hmm. self advocates for seeking out you know what uh, it makes us feel good and that's I guess the first place to start is that mm -hmm. intuitiveness to say okay when I eat this how do I feel right is it giving me more energy is it making me feel more mm -hmm. alive and well or do I have a temporary benefit that you know yeah it tastes good but you know then I want to go take a nap or my guts a mess or you know something you look fantastic you've been Thank an you. athlete a lot of people will want to emulate you so mm. when you talk about the foods you you um, that make you feel good and that you look for tell us what what are the criteria first off I mean I've it, really this year it's trying to not eat stuff in a package that's not always feasible right and so mm -hmm. basically yeah. when it is out of a package I look for first thing I'll look for is the ingredients right and so I think just like a basic tutorial on how to read a nutrition label is something very simple but very um, empowering so you know typically if it has like five or more ingredients um, then I will avoid it um, depending on obviously what it is exactly if it has a lot of stuff that I can't pronounce or won't recognize then it's definitely off the list like a little test that I'll do with my nephew when I babysit him he's like he wants Doritos and Cheetos and all this stuff it's like cool you can have them if you can pronounce the ingredients <laughs> on the back of the That's package perfect for the little kiddo. <laughs> and he's like he X, all y, afternoon and Z. like those aren't supposed to be together and like <laughs> Um, so that's really where I start, but it, I mean, 90% is really food in its natural form, right? So, you know, talking about green mm -hmm. veggies, all that, you know, boring, but you know, the stuff that really makes you but full of feel life. Good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I noticed when I raced a lot in Italy and the biggest difference I feel like from here, as far as, um, food consumption goes and, and, and grocery stores and, um, uh, convenience stores, whatever you know, they always say to stay, to stay out of the aisles, yep. right? To stay perimeter. healthy, right? Stay yep. on the perimeter. Um, and they have a very large perimeter that then spills into the aisles. I mean, there's fruits and vegetables in the aisles. Um, and we have the opposite. It's like a small perimeter and this massive, like especially if you go to a Ralph's or Albertsons or Piggly Wiggly or Winn-Dixie, I'm trying to think of some of the grocery stores that are all over the country, just ginormous section of every single thing you would hear crinkling before you opened it. Yeah. And that is what is considered food. And I guess really what you're saying is that's actually not food. Right. Yeah. The, the majority of it's not. And I think we've just gotten so far disconnected um, with where our food comes from. When I was living in Italy, yeah. it was like a permanent farmer's market, you know, and you still had yeah. like the, the specialist, the specialist grocer, you still had your, uh, your butcher, you know, for meats. And, and so it wasn't like, yes, you know, markets do exist. That wasn't where I was shopping. I was fortunate enough to be close enough to the center where that's where it was. And that's, yeah. you know, how we used to consume food. We used to know, you know, the person that was, was producing it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, that's not always, you know, accessible. It's not always the reality, you know, especially, you know, if you look around our country, there's a lot of food deserts, right, where you just don't have access to, mm -hmm. you know, clean, healthy food. Um, yeah. So it's it's a pretty big challenge, you know, when you're trying to do the right thing, trying to seek out um, clean, good food, and that's mm -hmm. all you have, you know, uh, at your availability. And with 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet, it's a little harder to know your farmer than when there was half a billion or something. Exactly. I mean, that makes more sense that we right. would have been able to look down the street and say, you know, hey, Joe, yeah. it, it just, it's not that way anymore. I mean, right. most of our food doesn't even come from within our own country. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, folks. Okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. 
So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.